please, City Clerk. Item 6B, adopt a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a three-year contract with Hinderleiter, Diamas, and Associates for Business License Administration. We will now uh, hear from uh, the finance director. Uh, uh, director Sun, please. I was going to give you your full name and all that, but I thought, well, let's just go there, okay? <laughs> but we look forward to your presentation. Thank you, Mayor and then Council Member uh, Chen Yu Sun, Finance Director. Uh, today I'm going to make a presentation for the Business License Administration. The object objective of the presentation is to adopt a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a three year contract with HDL and Associates for Business License Administration. Um, our agenda will cover some background and I will explain to the council why should the city select HDL and then we'll also uh, provide information on fee proposals and the fiscal impacts to the city staff recommendation. And in the end, I'll hand a, the presentation over to HDL staff um, for them to explain their business model and then their software package. Uh, the background, this is the background. Uh, and the city requires a business to do in, uh, in the city uh, to obtain proper business license and pay business license tax set forth in the municipal code. Currently, we pro process about 2,500 business license um, a year. And the, in this fiscal year, we have collected a, um, almost $1.9 million in business license fee and tax so far. Um, finance departments are very, uh, are very limited in staffing resources. We can only assign about one and a half FTEs to manage business license. Uh, these, uh, this, the staff not only uh, cover business license administration, they also need to cover some other duties um, in the financial services division. Um, and uh, San Bruno as a city has a. a has experienced some uh, technology limitation. Therefore, our coordination among some departments, including finance, um, community economic development and fire departments are not at the optimal level. Um, our consultants management partners recommended it to the city staff to outsource business license administration. So they solicited the business license proposals on behalf of the city and they received two proposals um, from, a, uh, from consultants. One is from HDL and the other one is from Muni Services. And um, staff dis dis um, discussed those proposals internally and we favor HDL's proposal. And uh, why do we want to select HDL? HDL provides a robust solutions for municipal business license management and in compliance. Many of our neighboring cities, including San Mateo and Belmont, have outsourced their business license administration to HDL and then achieved the positive results. With uh, uh, the agreement with HDL, um, we as a city hope to reduce some internal costs, improve efficiencies, and increase citywide revenues. Uh, HDL, the business license administrative so administration software, will hopefully help us to improve coordination uh, with the business and then the city department. Um, the, the software will provide an external business, a user-friendly interface, allow them to uh, submit applications for business license online and then pay their business license tax online as well. Internal staff will be able to review comments and then license, business license submittals electronically. And we will also be able to track our progress online as well. Of course, the HDL will rely on the business, uh, will rely on the software to do their management and administration. Uh, um, Fee-wise, the city will compensate HDL in a number of, of um, methods. Business license administration will be paid uh, will be paid at fifteen dollars per account per year, and will an annually increase that uh, fee at CPI level. HDL will also compensate for their compliance services, meaning business license tax 
discovery, business license tax audits, and collection of delinquent account fees services will be uh, compensated as a percentage of collected re revenues from 20 to 35 percent. Um, the baseline contract will cost by the city um, $37,500 annually, but with this contract, the finance department will be able to reduce half an net FTE and create a saving for the city for about $28,000. So the net cost increase for the city and for the baseline contract is less than $10,000. For a three-year contract, the total cost will be a little bit over $112,000. Any additional contract, any additional cost of the contract will be contingent upon additional revenue collected, and compensation to HDL will be netted against collected revenues. And so there will be no uh, expenditure budgeted for this uh, contract. Um, with that, staff recommend adopting resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a three-year contract with HDL Associates for business license administration. This ends my part of the pre presentation. Next, I will hand over the presentation to HDL staff, Josh Davis, he's with us. Uh, Melissa, can you bring if we can bring uh yeah I'm, I'm having some technical difficulties bringing him in i'm trying right now thank you it's just taking forever it seems like i think it's working now hopefully josh i'm trying to get you unmuted can you hear me yes there you are all right, thank you guys very much. Um, okay, do, apologies here, just wanted to make sure I can see the power, okay, there it is. Um, I think someone, if whoever's controlling can advance that for me, just to, I guess to the end of the slide there, I'm only able to see uh, a small portion of it. Well, we can, I can, I can get going. I think uh, um, if we if we want to if we want to get started. So again, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Um, as Ken, you said, we um, are currently looking at the administration of the business tax program. Uh, we at HDL are uh, currently right now um, uh, serving about 400 local governments um, uh, across the United States, primarily, I'm sorry, uh, in California, uh, but also across the United States. We were founded in 1983, and we are the largest sort of uh, holder of a tax database outside of um, the state of California's uh, tax departments. Uh, and in line with that as well, we are the sort of largest provider of tax and business administration in the state of California. And uh, most of all these programs that we're offering currently um, that we're talking about right now with regards to business license um, are again being done by a lot of the neighboring cities, but we're also doing some of these services for the city currently now um, with regards to TOT uh, and the transit occupancy tax, as well as the um, business license uh, discovery and audit services. Uh, we're 100% employee owned company and all of our uh, you know employees for the most part have sort of walked in your shoes. So these are programs that were developed by uh, uh, finance directors, city managers, council members and the like um, as a, members of our program. We have a pretty large Bay Area presence. Um, most of our clients um, in, in the area, including um, as mentioned previously, Belmont and um, San Mateo, uh, we're doing similar services and uh, administering the tax on behalf of the city. Uh, what we're really looking to propose are city-specific operations. So what we want to do is um, take the city's current business license program um, and truly expand on it, customize it to meet the city's uh, unique needs. Every city is different. Uh, your tax codes are different. Uh, the population, the business community is different. So we're really looking to develop some city-specific operations, uh, working with sort of our team of experts, monitoring the legislation in California and keeping up to date. 
um, and really trying trying to develop a program that uh, works directly with the city uh, together, um, including some other departments. So we have a proven record of, of, of service and growth. Um, as was mentioned earlier, typically most um, of these costs will ultimately be recovered by the city. Uh, over 85% of our clients actually see net positive return, so no expenses paid to HDL over the course of a contract. Uh, we're pretty confident that that will likely be the case in this situation as well. Uh, we also offer a reinstatement guarantee. So uh, Basically, during the implementation of this, we're going to be setting up and configuring uh, online functionality uh, and support for the business community, uh, dedicated phone lines, email, chat, um, and other support methods. All of those systems and processes at some point in time in the future, if the city ever decides to bring that back in house or thinks that there's some benefit or value of performing the functions internally some point in the future, those all get transferred uh, to the city at no additional charge. So you gain the benefit of all of the development and the services that we're, uh, that we're putting forward. A uh, quick sort of example of just the neighboring cities sort of landing page. This kind of got cut off here a little bit, but we're going to be managing sort of the welcome and landing page for the for the business community. We'll make available downloaded forms, all of the information, quick FAQs, um, and sort of a jumping off point for businesses to sort of understand what they need to do when they're going to open uh, within the city. Uh, that functionality extends uh, to um, all of these basic features here, so businesses can apply online, uh, they can renew their annual certificates online, uh, pay any balance due, they can submit a closure, um, and we also offer a public search portal, so to get information out for the information that is public and available, uh, anybody um, in the community can go online, look up information, uh, business listings, um, address information, and things like that that are made public. Um, during that business license process, again, we're going to be handling sort of all the new business licenses. Um, we're reviewing and processing each of those ones, doing classification checks and corrections, uh, validating state and other licenses. Uh, and most importantly here, uh, which was uh, touched on uh, briefly earlier by the finance director, is interdepartmental approvals and no notifications. So what we're looking to do is communicate directly with uh, community development, fire, and other uh, departments in the city that really could benefit from a, a streamlined approach to uh, helping the business community get through all of the approval processes all at once. So we have an electronic uh, approvals process that we'll be able to set up with these other departments as well to help streamline that and hopefully make it easy on the business community. Um, while the online functionality is there, we also provide uh, phone support and, and uh, email and as I get in live chat. And so there's a lot of different ways to help the community. But ultimately, the goal is that they can uh, do most of this uh, stuff from the comfort of their home. Uh, so that includes, um, again, a as this last item here, our compliance programs, uh, which we're currently doing now, are going to get rolled into this as well, which is our discovery audit and collections program, which is just ensuring that the city is receiving all the tax revenues that it is supposed to be receiving from, uh, from the business tax. Uh, to kind of further dive into the you know interdepartment cooperation, um, while we'll have some minimal sort of city footprint and dependencies, some of our staff will be taking on what we call sort of our new business concierge to help walk new businesses through and expedite their approvals. We provide dedicated support and communication, not just to the business community, but to you and to those other departments and use that sort of web-based reporting and tracking tool to help facilitate that. And finally, monitoring compliance with state legislation. There's been an, a, a number of state legislations that's come down over the last three to five years that have impacted the city's abilities uh, and processes to register business licenses and in many ways um, interacting with community development and other planning approvals. Um, and so we're taking care of monitoring that, adjusting the systems and processes and making sure that uh, the city's in compliance with all of those as well. Uh, quick um, access as well for city staff and um, any of the city management there. We have a reporting portal um, the next page will kind of give a demonstration of, of just a dashboard, gives the city a quick look into sort of the activities, transaction sums, how many new accounts are processed. We distribute lists um, and reporting all inclusive as a part of the program, so any information that's necessary. Many times we provide uh, lists of new businesses, uh, for an example, to the city or to council about who's opening, who's closing, and all that activity is available um, at no additional charge and included in our service. Um, it can also be access in, access in real time on our reporting portal. 
um, in a variety of different methods, uh, whether that's in a formalized report or downloadable Excel files. And again, here, just sort of a copy of access to some of the types of reports and the things that are available on the reporting portal. And that's it for us um, in terms of a presentation. Thank you guys very much you know, for the opportunity and we certainly can suit and are, are happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Uh, thank you, Ms. Sun. If we could uh, stop sharing the screen, please. And if there's any members of the public that would like to speak on this item, I would ask that you, uh, if you could please raise your virtual hand at this time and then um, I'll turn it to the colleagues for questions. Uh, Council Member Hamilton. So I don't have a question, I just have a, 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 a comment. I, I support this resolution. Um, the, the city has had some longstanding staffing issues that can cause delays for new businesses to complete all the processes that are needed. Um, uh, it, to open here in San Bruno. And this action is gonna make key parts of that process much more efficient in a fiscally prudent way, um, which will help our businesses and help us um, some of our staffing challenges. And, um, and the system generates metrics, which is uh, we've identified as one of our strategic priorities. So um, I'm, uh, I'm supportive of this. Thank you. I appreciate the presentation. Thank you, council member uh, Mason, please. Thank you. I have a couple questions. One is um, in regards to the slide that had the 2,500 active businesses. Um, I, I may have missed this, but the 1.9 million in fees, are those fees currently received or that we could receive if we were um, with this company and you know we got into a process of actually collecting the fees every year and following up? This $1.9 million is the actual revenue received this fiscal year um, as of the end of March. And is what's the potential then for fees received um, by going in this direction? I know you were going to ask the question. Unfortunately, I don't have enough data to do the assessment because that all depends on the additional revenue. HDL will be able to help us to, uh, to collect, meaning if they can identify businesses, they are not in compliance with the city code, so they they fail to register with the city as a business uh, as a business operating, or um, you know through their audit, uh, we hope they will find some uh, if the. Hopefully all businesses are honest, but some businesses may be under reporting their um, annual gross receipts. And if that, in that case, we'll be collecting additional revenues as well. And then also there are some co uh, collection uh, services we may be able to get a little bit more revenue. So it is hard for me to project at this time how much additional revenue we're going to get. But uh, through my conversation with HDL, I know uh, I, I was informed that many other cities have, saw, have, have seen their revenue in business license tax increase uh, with, their, with their service. So hopefully we'll, benefit, we'll experience similarly in this matter. And who's going to be the contract administrator? Will this, will this fall under your department? Who's going to be making sure that the contract is being adhered to? Yes, um, the contract administrator will be me and the, the financial service manager. So we'll be back up, back each other up, and the staff will be doing reconciliation for and uh, contract compliance, make sure everything is done in according to the agreement. Okay, great. And then one, one more question. I um, when I was reading the packet, it triggered um, the short-term rentals, uh, and I apologize for not um, seeing it sooner, but it may be uh, City Manager Grogan that will have to respond, but this is from the August 25th short-term rental ordinance, and um, it does say that STRs would be required to obtain a valid city-issued business license annually. So is this uh, one more step towards really starting to collect those um, license fees, maybe TOT in the future for these short-term rentals? Because we, I feel like we've been waiting for this to be implemented for a while now. Uh, separate action, but you're absolutely right. Uh, a uh, short-term rental post does have to have a business license as well as pay the fee um, once we set up the, the, the full regulatory framework 
uh, and work with the platform so they can collect directly and remit directly to the city. But you're absolutely right. Uh, someone with a short term rental will be able to, like any other business, go on to our website and be essentially redirected to the HCO platform to pay their business license. Thank you. Council Member Salazar. Thank you. So um, I, I'm uh, also in support of uh, taking this action. Um, you know, I, I think we've struggled as an organization in a few areas, and I think it is important for an organization to understand where its core competencies are and, and where it's lacking. And, and I think taking this step uh, clearly will move us closer to providing a, a better service to the public. Um, and, and clearly, uh, the, the benefit uh, of bringing in the technology that we've struggled uh, to bring in. Uh, as Council Member Hamilton mentioned, you know, the, the Council is interested in, in looking at, uh, at metrics data, uh, the ability to collect that data and present that data. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of the uh, tax updates we get from HDL currently on the sales tax. And so I, I, it's always a, a nicely formatted document that we get, very concise, very informative. And um, so, I know that HDL will be able to provide us with uh, some good information that uh, that we can use for our decisions. So um, definitely appreciate that. Uh, a question I have for staff, uh, in terms of the 0.5 FTE that's identified, um, is that a position or a portion of a position then that will be redeployed to something else? Is it an unfilled position currently? Um, how is that uh, realized? That is a field position right now. We have a temporary help to come in to help with the business license administration and then some other duties within the financial services division. So we do have a staff there as a, through a temporary um, arrangement. So she, she comes and works about the, uh, 16 hours a week. Um, so once the HDL uh, contract is in operation, we will will um, eliminate that half of the position within finance department. Okay, thank you. And, and in terms of this being a three-year contract, I, I don't anticipate that it wouldn't go well, but if after the first year we decide that this is not something we want to pursue, doing, are we committed to three years off the bat, or is there some provision that would allow us to uh, reduce the term of that contract? Yeah, there are provision in the in the contract language to provide the, uh, to provide the city a way to exit the contract if we decide that that's not the way we want to go. Okay, thank you very much. Those are my questions. Yeah. Vice Mayor Medina. Yes, thank you, uh, Director Sun. Um, I'm a little apprehensive. You know, this is. Uh, it's good hearing a little bit more information on this current position, which is, which is a part time for half and then there's a full time. And, and that that comes to my question like so how we're how we're doing this today. I, I jumped on the our city website fill out a bunch of forms and you got to turn them in, but maybe maybe you can kind of help me understand um, how this is happening today. For people to start businesses um and uh we'll start with that question first how about that sure um uh, yeah staff are um doing their best to manage the business license administration so um what a person you know a business owner will come in to apply for business license um we will accept the paperwork and then direct them to uh, to com community and, and is, Economic uh, community and economic development department and fire department to get the um, the uh, built zoning planning review and the fire inspection, um, and then once all all is being done, and then we'll be able to collect uh, business tax uh, when the when the when the business is submitted to their receipts. Um, annually, we issue business license renewal notice somewhere sometime in May, and then reminding the business owners that they'll renew their business license. And then they'll, by doing that, they will have to pay their business tax to the city. So that's just a very brief review of how it's being done. But in, in the process, our, um, the, currently the community, the zoning and planning 
the view and the fire inspection, um, there are, there is a breakdown in the in the in the coordination part. And then we're hoping with the HDL's participation in this uh, business license administration, they will help us to coordinate in the process of uh, all, in the zoning and planning review. In my staff report, I, I mentioned that because of the uh, the coordination is breaked down. Some of the businesses may have to delay their their uh, the launch of the business. So in the end, so their growth receipts for the year will be reduced, and then the, and then the city will re receive a little less tax than we will hope. So um, uh, that with HDL, we're hoping to um, reverse that situation will help us improve uh, to make our service more efficient to our customers and to the communities of the city of San Bruno. Thank you for that. Um, and management partners became involved as um, help me uh, help uh, refresh my memory on how that became um, about that they actually looked at this and, and provided a recommendation and and in this recommendation are there other recommendations that they worked on so uh devon Brogan, city manager uh, why don't i answer that question uh, so the city council will recall our prior finance director uh, left to take a position at another agency in the interim uh, we really needed to move forward with projects that the finance director was, was managing, as well as bring in additional consultant support to help our existing staff. Uh, and, 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 and so that person, Jim Steele, who was the former uh, finance director for the city of South San Francisco, uh, working now as a consultant, was able to come in and provide temporary support. Uh, subsequently, uh, as a city manager, I asked Jim Steele to engage in a few different efforts. One was to take a organizational, um, to undertake an organizational review of the finance department. Uh, that work is uh, nearing completion and will be provided to the city. As a part of his interim support, one of the deficiencies that he picked up on that we knew of was our business tax administration. Uh, and so, uh, one of the good things about uh, someone that is helping you out in the interim, they can actually move forward uh, because they're not encumbered with all of the day-to-day -day work. And so I asked him to undertake an effort to identify ways that we can, can improve. Uh, the, the recommendation was to look at outsourcing the administration of business uh, license, uh, of our business license tax to leverage both the technology and the horsepower of companies that do this day in and day out for cities up and down California. Uh, and so that is a way to both uh, leverage our dollars because we funded a part-time FTE just to help us clear some of the backlog and do a little bit better. And so for $10,000 more than that half-time cost, we can outsource this function and leverage that existing FTE to support other areas of the finance department. So it's really solving a business tax problem, but leveraging our staff to improve our other finance functions. And it is taking advantage of technology that now we do not have to buy and, uh, and implement with, with, within our organization. And immediately uh, we are now serving our customers how they wanna be served. Uh, currently, I would call our process a hybrid manual process, where while you can download the form online, you have to email it in. And so it's not a true um, online, it's not a true online process. And then we then print all those forms out and essentially do a, a manual process, uh, as well as our annual mailings are very uh, manual intensive. Uh, and this will uh, take us out of that line of business uh, where we can concentrate on the other finance functions and provide best-in-class services to our businesses. Got it. Um, so the, I'm sorry, let me go back to the presentation on the, the fees. Um, 35%, that's kind of the going rate for 
discovery and audits and, and delinquent accounts, 20%, that, that's kind of what, what uh, they're able to charge, I, I suppose. It, it seems, a, for first glance, it seems a little high, but maybe you can help me understand that, that in comparison with HDL and the other company, that that's kind of the going rate. Yeah, the, um, the, the, the percentage rate um, the compliance services for, from two pro pro proposals there are, are similar. Uh, there are not much of a difference between the compliance services. And then we were able to negotiate down uh, the collection service a little bit because the uh, standard fee, I think the HDL charge for the collection service was 25%. Now we were negotiating down a little bit to 20%. Um, um, so these are just um, occurrence. So once the, so for instance, if a business is not in compliance and they do not register HDL discovery for that, for well, that time, whatever the uh, tax they collect, they take a 35% cut. But once the good business is registered with the city in the database on an ongoing basis, that we were not going to be charged for the 35% of the revenue. It will be going through the regular account management, and they will be paying. We will be paying $15 a, a, a account annually for that. Um, and let me piggyback upon that answer because. It's worth being mindful of our cost structure here. And so it would be 35% of the business tax that's collected. We're noticing, we're noting that most of our businesses pay a tax of $150 or less. Uh, whereas our financial cost structure, if we were to in, employ an employee to do this work, this work that we're currently not able to do now because we don't have the staffing, at a professional level, at minimum, we're looking at an employee with a salary of approximately $60,000. You toss on our benefit load to that, we're closer to an, an all-in cost of $100,000 a year to do this work. And so while at a 35% recovery rate for the what they recover initially, may seem both 35% is a lot. When you compare that to the cost structure of us employing uh, additional bodies to do that work, there's quite a bit of savings there. Um, during the presentation from HDL, they, they mentioned like a chat version. So what I've heard is one, what, one complaint that I heard about starting a business in San Bruno is, well, you come in, you give them a form and then you kind of wait. So is this kind of like a, a, a little bit more assistance provided to, to a little bit of handholding through the chat format? Um, and um since maybe you just answer that part of it like what additional service is being provided through the yeah, chat I, I can certainly take that so i mean our goal is to expose uh, the community to as many levels of service as we can so um if they want to or are comfortable reaching out by phone then that's then we certainly have that available our call center uh staffed with um you know our tax specialist has uh typically under a 30 second uh wait time uh, for answering so that gets us um, through people to walk them through the processes take their payments we can actually take applications right on the phone so if people don't want to fill out something online or want to do something they can do that on the phone um, we can process emails we they can go online and do everything over over the web um, or as you mentioned they can use chat to communicate with us begin the process ask questions or status updates in terms of where their application may be at in the process or routing um, and so the goal really is to just open up as many lines of communication as possible to keep that information flowing for the most part they will get all of that sort of communication uh, via email and updates. So as it gets routed, for an example, uh, from uh, the community development over to FIRE, they would get a notification, okay, your planning has been approved. We're waiting for FIRE inspection or so on. Great. Does, does your database um, include the zoning for a specific property? Like, so somebody said, hey, I, I, see a, I see that this property at 535 San Mateo Avenue is for lease. And do, is there anything covered with, hey, what, could I, what kind of business could I put there? We do not have uh, currently the, um, the zoning data um, in this program. However, uh, many of our uh, clients uh, use the public search portal that we talked about. 
Um, and this is part of one of the tools that we offer uh, to the other departments to facilitate zoning approvals, um, is anyone can look up the historical record of businesses that address. So if you're just a member of the public and wanted to come and say, hey, I'm looking at the property um, on El Camino and I wanna see uh, what's there, um, you'd be able to look and say, oh, historically, it's always been a dentist. Maybe I can't, you know, open, you know, an automotive shop there or something similar. Now, that doesn't mean you still can't. We would still help route you through planning. But there is some kind of key indicators there. If you can tell that you're trying to open a retail business and the last 20 businesses have been a retail business, odds are you're probably going to have an easy time at an approval. Got it. Um, my my last question um, is I, I went to the, the city of Belmont's website and, and saw that you your site there pretty pretty slick uh pretty quick um and you do process short-term rental fees and i know that's something that we've been trying to get that's already been approved and um i guess uh I'll, i guess the city manager would negotiate that for something potentially in the future but it was nice to see that that's already set up and it's yeah. yeah, absolutely. We support sort of really the collection of any, you know, sort of local taxes. Um, as we mentioned before, we've we've helped the city with the transit occupancy tax. We certainly short term rentals is really pretty close to the same thing. It's kind of a combination of a of a permit or a business license and the TOT um, because both of those things are required. And certainly we have the capability to easily add that on uh, not only to process those returns, but also to find uh, similar to the our discovery process for business license, uh, where we find the businesses that aren't registered, we also have the ability to identify the short-term rentals that are listing on these websites like Airbnb and HomeAway, identify who they are down to the parcel, and then get them through the permitting, registration, and tax payment process. Okay, um, one last question. Sorry, one last question and one last comment. Um, how quickly would this contract be started is it pretty much flipping a switch and and by next month or a certain date when does it take effect and 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 the last comment that i have i do appreciate that there's metrics built into the software if i may um the contract if the council uh, uh authorizes um approve the adopt the resolution and then the city manager will be able to enter contract with HDL. After we enter into the contract, we'll start the implementation stage. Uh, my conversation with the HDL uh, tells me that the implementation will take up to 60 days. Um, so hopefully if everything goes smoothly with all the if the data migration is uh, going to happen as quickly as we hope, then we should be able to implement this a new process and at the start of next fiscal year. And, and if, if I can piggyback on that, I just wanted to thank Council Member Medina for his questions and very perceptive. Uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, HDL does have the ability to administer other taxes. Uh, you, you talked about short-term rental, but they also uh, have a division that administers marijuana taxes for uh, agencies as well. And so we are establishing, uh, should council vote yes, a relationship that we can expand in the future for various other taxes that uh, we we would collect. Those are my comments and questions, uh, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, council Member Mason. Yeah, I just I guess I wanted to follow up on the question around the contract administration. I just want to make sure that we're effectively not we're effectively looking at contracting this out, and the only time staff would be spending on this is really to administer the con to administer the existing contract or to you know or to provide oversight to the contract. Staff would no longer be involved in the actual operations of the business licensing. Is that right? Yeah, we're not going to be getting involved in the daily business license processing, business license administration, and then also receiving business license fees and reconciliation for each business license owner. That will be all done by uh, HDL. Staff will only be monitoring the, uh, the performance of the entire contract, reconciling the revenue received by the city, and then the fees taken by HDL. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, um, but like we said, the the point 
five person or staff component is uh, not a permanent employee, an FT, that is a um, um, somebody who's coming in on a 16 hour a week. Um, also, what happens if we still have members of the community, business and otherwise, that they still want to walk in, they have a concern, something's not happening in a timely fashion, what are the mechanisms in which they have for uh, to, to ask questions and to receive good quality customer service? Well, we will continue uh, providing customer service to people coming to the front desk and I will uh, we'll, uh, we'll guide them through the HDL uh, portal to, to submit their application online. If they need assistance, staff will help them to, to uh, submit online, provide any kind of help that we can. And of course, we'll develop a procedure internally with, um, a, a, with with HDL regarding the new uh, business license application and business license tax submittal uh, um, um, process. Okay, thank you. Uh, seeing no members of the public and seeing no more questions from my colleagues, uh, this is a, an action item that would need a resolution um, introduced uh, if the council wishes to go forward. Mr. Mayor, I'd like, yes. to, I'd like to make a motion that we adopt the resolution. I'll second. Uh, Hamilton Salazar, motion and second. Roll call, please. Council Member Hamilton? Aye. Council Member Mason? Aye. Council Member Salazar? Aye. Vice Mayor Marty Medina? Aye. Mayor Rico Medina? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you.